I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorm, Maine. I really enjoy this video on the repair and restoration of the hood of an antique long case clock. Uh, typically, I won't do a partial restoration, but this hood was in desperate need of repair, and a lot of these are unique to these antique clocks. Uh, you're going to see a lot of uh, intricate veneer repairs, a lot of percussing, one of my favorite words. Uh, there's a lot of touch-up work and spot finishing techniques. And there's also an appearance of my four-legged assistant, who was always very interested in any work that had to do with hide glue. So enjoy the video, subscribe, hit like, and feel free to share it on any other platform. So I'd appreciate it. This is the bonnet of a long case clock uh, from England about 1830. I don't have the case here. I only have the bonnet. That's what I'm going to repair now. It's got a lot of veneer problems. This uh, banding is popping off along here. Luckily, we've got a lot of the pieces that go with that. Uh, there's boards that are coming loose uh, that were glued joints. Uh, also, the door has uh, a small veneer problem. Uh, the veneers, the wood or veneer is fractured in this area here. Now, I don't know what's going on there, but I've got to remove this glass and reinstall it. It wasn't installed correctly last time. Someone did it, and uh, I'll figure that out then. This upper section here, you know, the whole molding here is kind of curved back. That's just something that's happened with age. We're not going to do any, even attempt to do anything about that. I think I'll start with the, uh, the this case itself because I've got all these pieces, uh, and then see what I've got here. I'm sure I'll just while I'm doing that, I'll discover all the other places that might be loose. So I kind of like to start, you know, on the inside, work my way out. And this board, I don't know what you call this board exactly, but it's a little facing board which surrounds the clock face. I notice it's loose, it's attached to the side, and the side is loose. So uh, I think I need to glue the side back and get everything in place here first. While I'm letting this dry, I'll uh, start on the door. I don't think I need to take these hinges off yet. Uh, this one has a screw protruding. I really don't like that, but I'm going to leave it alone for now. I'm going to take this putty out and get the glass out first. So I've been working and working along the edge of this uh, glass, uh, trying to get it clear of the putty, but the glass seems really tight in the frame, and really hasn't, doesn't want to move. And of course there's, there's putty on the other side of this piece of glass, you know, between the glass and the frame. So I think I'm going to try to gently heat up this side of it while pushing down as much as I dare to try to get it to start to move.
once you get your knife under this loose veneer, it's always difficult to know how far to push it. So I'm just gently probing, not too hard. You know, I feel like if I forced hard enough, I could probably take all this veneer up. But it's down. You just sort of have to play it by ear and probe as much as you dare. Part of this veneer didn't go down. It's still up. Maybe I needed more clamping pressure, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to warm this up, loosen this up a bit, and I may uh, then down here at the end of the piece of veneer remove a little bit of veneer so that I can push this flat again. Well, this is good. I didn't realize that the the piece of veneer actually extended all the way under the rest of the veneer, uh, this little piece of uh, holly. And so I don't really have to trim it. Now I can glue it down and it should afterwards, then I might just have to trim off the end a little bit and then replace, then I'll glue down the piece of holly when I glue this down. veneer here and there's this crack which always worried me and I, I'll work some glue in there and I can clamp all this down at once.
So note, when I'm gluing this up, uh, the piece of veneer I cut isn't uh, thick enough, even though it's a nice old uh, antique veneer that's pretty thick. It's not as thick as this veneer on the door frame, so I cut an additional piece. I'll glue down two pieces to make up the thickness. So I've got uh, two areas of concern here. Uh, one's not bad. I got this, this piece is cracked right along here, this weak point, and glue that back. This part's a little more troubling. Uh, this veneer is broken. I have the pieces, but they're just hanging out in the middle of the thin air. So I think what I'm going to need to do is uh, cut this back a little bit and glue a new piece of uh, veneer in there.
you'll see that I cut two pieces uh, once again to uh, get the required thickness. I think I'm ready now to start gluing down the uh, curve banding uh, along the line here. Uh, we have quite a few of the pieces and there's a couple missing. All right, while I'm waiting for this glue to dry, I can get back on the door. Right next to my patch there, I had a, a little bit of misalignment, so I heated it up, I reclamped it. I think I can take these clamps off now, these have been on for about four hours, and then continue gluing that little band. Oh, wow, one of my pieces is uh, misaligned, so I, I should be able just to heat it up and clamp it back down again. Okay, so now I've just got 
uh, two places where I've got to put in some uh, new veneer. Okay, while well, these dry, I can get back on the door again. So yesterday, while working on this door frame, uh, in two places, this delicate veneer that, that overlaps or sticks out past the frame, uh, cracked in two places. I had to glue it. I did that off camera, I'm sorry. But what I decided was, uh, what I need to do is install the glass because the glass will help support this piece of veneer while I then finish sanding and finishing the front. Okay, so the glass is in the door. I'm going to let that set for a little while. And in the meantime, I'll get back to this little row of uh, banding I've glued down. Now I'll see if I can clean this uh, glue off with a damp rag.
now I'll sand my uh, new patches of wood. Okay, I've sanded this whole little edge of banding here with 220. I filled in some of the spaces between the pieces of veneer. And uh, I think now the, it seems great. The next step, the color's good. I'm not going to do any standing ahead of time. I'm going to go ahead and seal this with a couple coats of shellac. And uh, once I have it really leveled off with the shellac and really smooth, then I'll go back and do my touch-ups and color work. Now I've also been sanding my repair areas on the door frame. And now I'm going to go over the whole door frame just lightly with this 220. And then I'll give, uh, I'm going to brush a coat of shellac on the frame. and the little banding above the door. So I put another coat of shellac on last night and I put an extra amount on my new pieces. And now I'm going to sand with 500. Uh, I hope you can see that how grainy the wood is. It's very grainy. So what I want to do is, is sand the shellac, try to level that out so the grain is all filled in. You can also see on the door, although when I applied the coat, it looked beautiful, but as it dries, you know, it looks a little uneven because it's just my first coat. So I'm going to sand that with 500 and give that a coat too. And once again, especially emphasizing getting my new pieces of wood, all the grain filled in. So this is uh, leveled off pretty nice, you know, pretty well. I mean, it's not really level. There's still ups and downs between the pieces of veneer. I didn't try to make this level, but the finish is leveling off nicely. I think you can still see where uh, my new piece still is a little grainy. You can see it because there's white in the grain, but generally speaking, it's uh, done pretty nice. The next coat should look great. So after I've sanded it as much as I can with 500, there's still shiny places. Those are low places. I'm not going to try to cut down to those. I'm not trying to level this off. Uh, but I'll go over it with a scotch bike gray pad. And that sort of gets down in there and uh, takes the gloss off and is, is helpful before the next coat. All right, I, uh, I let this coat uh, dry overnight. Uh, it looks a lot better than the, than the first coats, naturally. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand this again with 500. And then go over it with the gray pad. And now I'll then color in my patches and, and other touch-ups and stuff that I need to do. Now I'll wipe these uh, areas off with some paint thinner and uh, do my touch-ups. I'm going to start off by uh, brushing on some uh, medium brown walnut dye stain.
Okay, that's uh, all for now. I'm going to let this stain dry. It's a fast drying stain. Uh, I'll give it an hour or maybe two. And then I'm going to pad some finish on here and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, stain's dried. Uh, now I'm going to pad some finish on. Uh, I like using this uh, lacquer that's made for French polishing. I'm going to let this coat dry uh, overnight. And uh, my touch ups are still light. I think I'll probably uh, tone them with a little aerosol tomorrow. All right, it's not looking bad, but when I patted it, I did take off some of the color on my touch up. So I should have sealed it with uh, aerosol first. But what I'm going to do now is use uh, aerosols to get my final color on my touch ups. All right, I'm going to use a uh, medium brown walnut toner. So uh, the medium brown walnut toner was kind of the right color, but it wasn't dark enough. So I just sort of dusted them with a little extra dark walnut. I think it looks good. Let's see. Yeah, I think that uh, I think that looks good. So I think I'm going to give these uh, areas a quick coat of uh, aerosol lacquer just to seal in my color work. Uh, just these areas here uh, before I start patting again. All right, my uh, lacquer dried, so now I'm going to uh, pat it again with the patting lacquer. Alright, I think I can uh, start the waxing process now. Uh, I'm just using some paste wax I got from the hardware store, but it has brown coloring in it. It's brown wax. There's so many little nooks and crannies and corners here that uh, as I wax, if any, you know, it'll help color them up. Kind of like working like a scratch cover kind of thing. I'm also using a little steel wool here just to help uh, clean and smooth the surface. A stencil brush helps with the corners. So there we go. This is the uh, bonnet of a 
early 19th century tall case clock and it had a, a quite a few problems with the banding along here the door had a crack in it uh, the glass itself was misaligned the panels were cracked but uh, everything went back where it was supposed to I think it looks pretty good